Well, happy Wednesday, everyone. I hope you're doing amazing. Well, today in chapter 10 of Corinthians, um, Paul is going to defend his ministry to the Corinthians. He is going to talk about how he does things, not like the world, but like what God directs. Hi, I'm Pastor Mark with Heights Christian Church. We are going to the Bible in five years. We would love it very much if you would subscribe to our channel. And if you get to our channel, there should be a little subscribe button up on the top. Go ahead and hit that and you will receive and hit the little bell and that will um, let you know on a daily basis that the, the video is ready. We can read through the Bible together and we'll talk a little bit about what Jesus is doing in his word to help us to be more like him. Sound great? Okay, well let's dive right into 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and we will do that. By the humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you. I, Paul, who am timid when face to face with you, but bold toward you when away. I beg you that when I come, I may not be as bold as I expect to be toward some people who think that we live by the standards of this world. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. You are judging by appearances. If anyone is confident that they belong to Christ, they should consider again that we belong to Christ just as much as they do. So even if they boast, even if I boast somewhat freely about the authority the Lord gave us for building you up rather than tearing you down, I will not be ashamed of it. I do not want to seem to be trying to frighten you with my letters. For some say his letters are weighty and forceful, but in person he is unimpressive and his speaking amounts to nothing. Such people should realize that what we are in our letters when we are absent, we will be in our actions when we are present. We do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. We, however, will not boast beyond proper limits, but will confine our boasting to the sphere of service God himself has assigned to us a sphere that also includes you. We're not going too far in our boasting, as would be the case if we had not come to you, for we did get as far as you with the gospel of Christ. Neither do we go beyond our limits by boasting of work done by others. Our hope is that as your faith continues to grow, our sphere of activity among you will greatly expand, so that we can preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. For we do not want to boast about work already done in someone else's territory, but let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. For it is not one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. Now, in this passage of scripture, Paul is talking about this. Some other people are talking some smack about him, and they are trying to uh, discredit Paul and what he does. And Yes, those times he comes, he's very timid and humble and meek, just like Christ did. But he speaks truth and continually. And so maybe he wants to get to the point. So when he writes his letters, people say, oh, he's so strong in his letters. But when he comes, he's not so strong. Well, the thing here is that Paul doesn't care, honestly. He doesn't care. Because he, he is not doing the world standards. He's not this great orator. He's not trying to draw people into himself. He is pointing people to Jesus. And we should live the same way. We need to know that we are not garnered by the standards of the world. We are garnered by God's approval of us. And he says that at the end. For it is not the one who commends himself who is approved but the one whom the Lord commends. And so he talks about this 
very thing. He says in verse 3, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. So what he's talking about here is that, again, he is not going to the standards of the world. He's doing the standards of God. And he needs, he works for God. He doesn't work for the Corinthians. He doesn't work for his own edification. He is working because the gospel compels him to help others and to teach others the way of God. Listen, you can destroy arguments by your divine wisdom in scripture and that because then people have no way of fighting against that and they will rage against you because they don't have the arguments and so uh, make sure that you're ready for it and still continue to be timid and humble as you go just remember who you work for you work for God no one else and that is my encouragement for you you don't need the accolades of other men you need the accolades of your Heavenly Father and your Savior, Jesus Christ. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.